everyone. I'm Mary Piasta here with Brain Trust, and I'm with my co-host, Darren Blonsky, a wealth advisor, and Chelsea Runnings, a real estate expert. And we're here to bring you facts over fear with what's going on in the world today. To start off, we're going to have Darren give us a show of the markets, and then um, Chelsea, a real estate update, and I'll wrap it up with legal. So Darren, how's it looking out there? Well, if you like seasickness, then you like the markets. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> it's, it's been pretty interesting lately. Uh, we almost had a fall apart in the market here last couple of days, and the Fed stepped in to save the day, as they tend to keep doing. Uh, so let's back up and talk a little bit about what's happening here. The, uh, so this in front of you is the S&P 500, SPY. I'm gonna actually jump over to the SPX. This is the, uh, SPX is a little easier to see because it's traded globally. We can't buy it here in the US. It's actually illegal to buy CDFs in the, uh, which are, uh, show and flow a little bit better and we can see kind of the movement and you can see this were these were the these were the markets uh, we didn't put a high in the in the S&P but we did put a high in the Qs or the tech sector uh, and we hit this and weren't able to get above it and fell back down we tested this 3000 mark on the S&P 500 went a little bit below it found some support well what gave us support what gave us support is the Fed actually came out yesterday and said oh by the way, we're going to start buying individual bonds. That's right. They're going to go out and they're going to buy individual debt from different companies throughout the U.S. Now, think about that. I mean, that's like the government saying, we're going to print money and, well, we're going to prop this company up and prop that company up. And it's just a lot of controversy. But it makes sense in some ways because we've been through the liquidity crisis, which if we back on up and go back through that real quick, if you look at the liquidity crisis we went through in March, it's a good chance we're faced now with a solvency crisis, right? Think about it. If you're a business and you can only you open up and only 70% of your patrons come back because they're not going to shop or they're not going to have dinner, you're going to have solvency issues. So that's what we're staring down the pipe right now is the solvency issues along with the resurgence of COVID, right? Obviously, Texas printed today, they had some records. Florida had some records. Things aren't looking good. Um, Florida closed their restaurants and their bars back down. Whether this is the second wave or this is just the first wave continuing because we never really went away, who knows, right? But the, the reality is the numbers don't look awesome. And so this is weighing on the markets heavily because of that. If we go into our john hopkins numbers and just take a look and we'll go to california because we live in california i'm not a rocket scientist but that certainly looks like it's going up not down it doesn't look like it's flattened now if you go to a place like nevada one of our neighbors uh, you see more of a flatten the curve but now you see that lift off right you go to texas and you look at what's going on in texas that's certainly spiking up. We saw a flattening and a spike up. So that's what people are concerned, obviously, that, hey, this is coming back. This is going to be a bigger issue. You know, I think the reality is there's just not enough political will to shut everything down again. So I think that bodes well for the economy. I think it, it doesn't bode well for people with compromised immune systems, with people who might be affected by COVID, because it's going to be very difficult to shut things back down, especially coming into an election. There's a lot of pressure to keep the steroids in the market and that's what we saw yesterday so we saw Jerome Powell step in and give the old market a shot in the arm and took off to the races and you could see this run overnight I mean it was just straight up and then we found some kind of a flattening through the afternoon to this morning uh, so things are calming down a little bit from that run up but it's been significant and a rundown we literally were on the call yesterday on with a client and the client was saying sell me all put me into cash literally while we're talking the news comes out Jerome Powell says hey we're gonna buy bonds or the press release comes out 
and the market just shoots up and we go, see, this is why we don't want to get you out of the market right now. Too crazy, too many things that don't aren't clear, the signals aren't clear. What is clear is that the Fed is going to put the market. What does the put mean? It means they're going to protect it. They're going to step in when they need to step in when they think it's getting weak. It doesn't appear at this point the Fed's going to let this market roll over. That's a risk on attitude, right? That's an attitude that we need to stay in the markets, continue to benefit from the markets, continue to contribute to our 401ks. Will it roll over at some point? Maybe. We'll see. But right now, it doesn't appear that the Fed's going to let that happen. That's interesting. Um, I mean, I wish I knew how to just print my own money, but I think that's illegal, right? <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's kind of like you're talking about the, the Swiss bank, like a couple weeks ago, right? Where the Swiss <laughs> bank is literally printing francs and going out and buying tech stocks with it. What's this? I don't know. So yeah, I guess that's, that's an easy way to deal with it, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but there's a, there's a lot of concerns with the amount of money we're going to have to print. And people are saying that I'm reading through the wires that, you know, this isn't even the beginning of the amount of money it's going to need to get printed. We're looking at at least another trillion dollars this year uh, and quite possibly in the next year, two to three trillion more. The astronomical amount of debt is going to put a lot of pressure on the dollar. And uh, we'll see how it plays out and shakes out. Bottom line is I think we've already transitioned to something called modern monetary theory. I just don't think anyone's really willing to admit it yet. So Chelsea, what, what are you seeing in the real estate market? Looks, I'm thinking about what Darren just said, and it seems kind of like the Fed's printing the money seems like a Band-Aid or just like a temporary fix. And you mentioned that they're buying out or buying these bonds for these companies, but then, like you said, maybe business is down 75% when they do reopen, which... I got my hair done last week, you guys, and it felt great to have some normalcy, but the experience was so different and just a little uncomfortable. So I don't really see people going back to normal, even though we all are craving it. And I think we're really starting to see that in the real estate market because I keep saying how we're seeing more people come from the urban areas. And as my broker called it, the urban flight syndrome, we're seeing those people come from the bigger cities and buying houses in like Sonoma and Petaluma areas where they can get more land and have more space. But interesting, what we're really seeing is we're seeing a surge in high end purchases um, as like second home. So people who can come from San Francisco can distance themselves and distance themselves from the COVID risk. And in Sonoma County, um, one quarter of our homes are considered luxury, which is a million dollars and over. And we saw, let's see, we saw a overall, just not just luxury, but all sales residential. We saw a 17% increase compared to last year in sales in May alone, but we're down 24% in inventory from last year. So I keep saying it, I keep saying it, we have so many buyers coming and not enough inventory and those numbers really are, they're just, that's the proof right there. And then on top of the luxury homes that are buying, we're seeing the higher end quartile properties, which is 2.4 million and above selling too. We've actually never seen as many homes in this quartile sell as much as they did in May, like ever. Um, they really sit for a while, right? I mean, they, in the, sit, for, in they sit for a year or more. And in May, we had 21 high-end quartile properties sell in Sonoma Valley. So you can yeah. see these people who have the money are coming out of the city. They're coming into the smaller areas to get away from people to get their space. And as we continue having this virtual work environment where people don't have to rent those expensive apartments or little houses in the city and they can work from home and own a home for probably half of what their rent is down in the city or down in Sonoma. We're really seeing that. So it'll be interesting though to see how it's going to affect the business because clearly people don't want to be around other people as much right now. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how it how businesses shake out. Is this temporary fix, a Band-Aid, or are businesses going to survive even with all these people moving here? Or are they just not going to be able to sustain it anymore? 
Well, you definitely see a bunch of activity around our, our historic plaza with people walking around and shopping and the, the curbside restaurant services. Like, it seems really busy, which I think that's like a promising thing for business. So if these people are coming, you know, buying these high-end homes, then maybe they will be inclined, maybe they're part of that. Um, so yeah, I think you're right, though. I think we're going to have to see what happens. Yeah, especially, I mean, with the second wave we're expecting, and who knows, maybe it'll come sooner with all the protesting and the groups that people have been in. Maybe it'll hit us a little sooner than what we were anticipating. Um, right. I think you bring up a really interesting point because you, you're talking about your hair getting, uh, going to the hairdresser last week, and, you know, it wasn't the same experience. And I think if our perception of busyness it's possible that we're perceiving things as more busy just because people were in their cars and moving more in their cars. But the, at the end of the day, what really matters is the volume, right? It's how many times can you turn that table? How many times can you make that sale? Uh, and yeah. I just can't imagine that, you know, restaurant in the square, for example, is able to turn or the Swiss. Let's take the Swiss, for example, how many people go to lunch every day there for years and they got to turn tables. And how are they able to turn the same tables in the same way? Uh, I think, I think we're, we've got kind of a, I think we're really in a honeymoon period, right? Where we're coming out of being locked down and we're excited. But I look at it like Dillon Beach. I saw a buddy of mine who posted pictures of going, he went out to Dillon Beach on Friday and there was nobody there. And I remember two weeks ago when they locked us down and there was like, you know, everyone got in trouble because there were so many people going. And I think like the, the, kind of the initialness of the opening is wearing off on some of like the parks and stuff that's been open longer. It will be interesting to see if that initialness or that kind of honeymoon period happens with small businesses and then they really get clobbered at that point. Right. Oh, or sorry, I really want to pivot. Go ahead. I totally forgot. I wanted to screen share something with you guys. Let me. Ooh, it's all about the screen share. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> So this is just to show you guys like our market update so you can kind of see the numbers because I'm a numbers person. So you can see the change of... It didn't, it's not showing right. Hold on a sec there. It's only showing a white bar. Uh -oh. Chelsea, can you scan up? Hold on. There you go. Oh, can you see it? I can see it. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can see from year over year the changes in both sales and pricing. Um, overall, Sonoma County saw a 1.4% increase in pricing as a whole, but you can see that they were down 55, almost 56% in sales. And a lot of that has to do with our inventory, our lack of inventory. I mean, look at the numbers on the far right. You can see 2.4 months of inventory, how many homes are available to the buyers versus mm -hmm. now we're down to 2.1%. But then it's interesting too, the pricing part of this, right? So you're showing the median sold price is actually going up. So there's more demand, right? So stuff selling at a higher level than we'd think, I guess, for this time. Is that, how do we read that? Yeah. So the demand is there. More people are, well, remember we have those great interest rates too. So more people are qualified to buy the homes and they're trying to take advantage of those low interest rates. So they're out there and that demand keeps pushing those prices up. And as our inventory continues to drop, we just keep seeing that price increase. And the inventory, I've mentioned this a couple of times, buyer confidence has pretty much stayed the same from pre-COVID to now and seller confidence has dropped like by half. So it's, it's interesting to see. I think people automatically equate uh, maybe a recession to a housing crisis and a, a market crash. And that's just not the case that we're seeing right now. I don't anticipate that we're going to see that at all in the real estate world. Well, and that's, like, Certainly that's true. It, definitely areas. I think we'll see real estate issues in the big cities perhaps, but not, yeah. not in more rural, more rural areas. And perhaps more in the commercial world too, as businesses, can no longer keep their leases or sustain their business to stay open. Well, and if and Mary, you might know more about this. It'd be a good point to draw you in. But what I heard is California's 
creating some kind of out for people with commercial leases. Have you heard anything about that? I hear that there's there's legislation, and in fact, I'd like to bring a commercial broker on our on our show to provide some uh, insight into it. I haven't heard that anything has actually happened, but um, there are a lot of neat initiatives that are that are kind of in play at the federal level. We're we're seeing some more guidance on the PPP loans that were given. And um, I mean, it's still a little bit spotty and people are calling it the roller coaster. We've got, you know, the syndrome, right, Chelsea? And now we've got the roller coaster of the PPP regulations. Um, and so like, that's something that, that I'm monitoring closely to just see what's going to happen for business because the issue there is forgiveness. And if these businesses got these loans thinking they're going to be forgivable and then all of a sudden, you know, they're, more criteria to make them not as forgivable, then it kind of, it, it creates more of a um, problem for the businesses to continue to operate like with what we were talking about. Um, and the other big legal things uh, that we're seeing right now are, you know, more activity through the courts. Uh, people are starting to get sued for not paying rent. Um, things are starting to get decided. And this is all happening since the world is pivoting into a more virtual way. And so I think, you know, as our, as our infrastructure continues to adapt to what's going on, um, people pivot, there will be opportunities for business and also new things for people to deal with. So, you know, it's an interesting time out there on all fronts. That's for sure. Right. <laughs> I heard uh, Kudlow, uh, part of the Trump administration yesterday, said that they're not going to extend um, unemployment benefits to $600. Uh, past July, I think is what he said. And like the impacts of that are huge because if you think about anyone making more than $15 an hour, as we've talked about in some previous shows, is basically getting paid more to stay home. And that's disincentivizing work, but the jobs have to be there, right? And if the restaurants can't make it, if the retail can't make it, if the hospitality doesn't pick back up, because clearly there's not a reduction in cases of COVID. Uh, if you believe the numbers that we're looking at, who knows, right? But there's not, the reduction's not there. So if the reduction's not there, then it's, I'm hard pressed to see how those three major employment industries really come back in line, especially here in the county in a big way. Well, and it's like, we should circle back to our video with Chris Allen and um, the lady from Star Staffing as well. And both of them, I think, talked about how hard it is to get people to staff those jobs at that minimum wage level, right? Because of that $600 payment. So actually this could be a good thing for employers that are looking to staff things like, you know, they're, they're um, in the tourist industry as people come back more and, you know, th there is that workforce. So. Yeah. If we don't get the incentives back to work, why, why would you work? Right. Unless right. Like, Oh, I'm going to work harder for less. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Part of <laughs> and sense. prices are going up. Like I ordered one large pizza from the local place and had it delivered and it was 50 bucks. Like oh, one? for one large, oh wait, there were breadsticks too. I'm, I'm mistaken. So, but I mean a pizza and five breadsticks, $50. Like wow. you know, if you're making 15 bucks an hour, like how many hours do you have to work to order a, a pizza? So, <laughs> That's insane. You know, it's like, I feel like we're seeing prices go up through this time too. And I mean, part of that is like businesses, they have to absorb their loss, right? So now the $25 pizza is now a $35 pizza. So the way that's going to impact our economy, I don't know, but Darren, you might be able to project that later. You know, on. It's interesting because we're seeing more deflationary pressures certainly right now. And a big part of that's just the oil and, you know, where the oil has been and it creates a drag on the markets from a deflationary standpoint. Uh, but it's very possible inflation really kicks up at some point. You, one has to really wonder how the Fed can print so much money. And you, because that money has to, and you've heard me talk in the past about the, the Tina trade, right? There is no alternative. And a lot of the trading going into the market is literally people taking their stimulus checks and pumping them into the markets. We can show that now. We have the facts. That actually happened in extensive ways. And that will ultimately generate an inflationary environment if that volume of money keeps turning like that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
as a side note, what's interesting, I was looking at some research yesterday. So Robin Hood, who you, you guys heard me talk about Robin Hood, right? And it's Robin Hood is like the millennial trading platform where they buy stocks for free all day and stuff. And they pump all their trades into a group called Citadel. 64% of their trades go in. And then what happens is that data gets sold to people. And then you, the, the machines front run. So if they see big trades coming in for like Hertz and Tesla and Google and Facebook, they'll front run those trades and actually make money looping around that front running. So it, it's just an interesting time, right, that we're in and that we're, the government's printing money, people are pushing into the market, uh, and then ultimately – uh, the, the 20 somethings are running the market up through the uh, Robin hood apps and day trading. It's been interesting to watch. And people we'll don't want to play 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 you know, I mean. crap, yeah, on that. So there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else to add you guys, or shall we wrap it up until next time? Um, I'll just say we live in a world full of misinformation. So come back to our videos. We try to upload once a week to bring you guys facts over fear. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to share our facts and stop pushing the fear out there and just come back every week and we'll bring you guys some, some more information. Well said, Chelsea. Thanks, Have a great week, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye.